I thank the Lord God Almighty once again for this great privilege to bring to us the word. I am nothing without him. If not for him, he's our helper, our teacher. And this moment, I just want to invite him to come and take total preeminence. I just want the Lord God that I will be as an oracle unto the Lord tonight. And that at the end of the day, somebody is going to leave this place blessed. The Bible says that the word of God does not come out and go back void without accomplishing the purpose for which it was sent. And I pray for us today and for myself that the word that will come out today will not go back in vain in the name of Jesus. And it will accomplish the purpose for which it is sent in the name of Jesus. Amen. Before I go into the message of today, I just want us to connect again to the, with the Holy Spirit. There is this song that has been on my lips for the past one week. And I want us to focus and concentrate as we listen to this song so that it can minister to our souls. I pray the Bible says our God is a consuming fire. We want to invite him right now as a consuming fire to come and consume whatever thing that does not give him glory in our lives, in the ministry, wherever we are, in our families. So beloved, I just want you to be connected as you worship with me in this song, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. <laughs> I worship you today, when you're all consumed with fire, come on, manifest yourself. Hey. Nothing hides from you. See everything, even the deepest secret of men. It follows every evil, consume every wickedness. You are in hell, consuming fire. Come and manifest yourself. You are in your hands. I worship you today. Even the deepest sacred of men, expose every evil, consume every wickedness. You are in a of victory. Come and manifest yourself. Consume me fire. Worship you today. You are the all consuming fire. Come and manifest yourself. Consume me fire. Now before you. You are the all consuming fire. Come and manifest yourself. Consume me fire. Worship you today. You are the all consuming fire. Come and manifest yourself. Consume fire. I bow before you. You are the all consuming fire. Come and manifest yourself. Fall of fire. Make me a fire light. Set my soul on fire. Manifest yourself in me. Speak to my voice, Lord. Sing to my eyes. You are the all consuming fire. Come and manifest yourself. Fire. Make me a shining light. Set my heart on fire. Manifest yourself in me. 
Speak to my voice, Lord. Speak to my voice. You are the all-consuming fire. Come and manifest yourself. Consuming fire. You are the all-consuming fire. Come and manifest yourself. Consuming fire, I fall before your throne. You are the all consuming fire. Come and manifest yourself. You are the all consuming fire. We blazing fire in your eyes. Come on, my best to say, you are the all consuming fire, making fire in your eyes, consuming every evil world. I guess it's a good body, oh, cause you and I keep saving fire in your house. Cause you and me, every evil world, come in my best yourself. Your body, oh, cause you and I keep saving fire in your house. Cause you and me, cause you and me. Consuming fire, consuming fire, consuming fire, consuming fire, Oh, consuming fire, worship you today. You are the fire we worship you today. Of oh God, our Father, consuming Amen. fire of the Most High God, manifest yourself in our midst. Manifest yourself. In Consume midst. every evil. Expose every wickedness that may we may shine forth as the light in this world, in this dark world. Every evil thought. Every strange way, every council, panic, conspiracy of darkness. Lord, you are the consuming fire. Consuming Fall fire. upon our lives as individual. Consume everything, anything in our life that does not give you glory. Consume anything in the ministry that does not give you glory. Consume, Consume anything in our family, in the body of Christ, Lord. that does not give you glory. That does not in the name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' mighty name, we have worshipped. Amen. Beloved, I have titled the message of today, What are you doing with your talent? Hallelujah. Amen. What are you doing with your talent? But before I go into today's message, I didn't want to steal our time in the testimony because I know I'll be bringing the word and I will just use the opportunity to share a testimony that has been as a burden in my heart. You know, when we left from the convention in Innsbruck, the 2018 CHMI convention, there was a time that Brother Michael went down on his knees and he cried and he said that heaven should record this day for us or against us. That word minister so mightily in my spirit. And I made up my mind, I said, God, whatever thing that my heart may be condemning me in one way or another, I pray that as I come back from this convention, may my life be transformed. I got back to Finland and a purpose in my heart that even at my workplace, because I used to wear trousers in my workplace, and I've been wearing trousers in my workplace for the past six years since I went on that job. But I came this time around and I went before the Lord in prayers and I told God, God, make a way for me. Set the heart of kings are in the hands of the Lord. I prayed and by the time I will be coming back, my sister was in Cameroon. So 
So I called her and told her to sew me six skirts. She did sew it. At the end, she had to remove about two half kilograms, but she couldn't remove my skirt. I told her, please don't. She removed her own things, but she brought the skirt along. She said, she brought it to me, I prayed, and I went to my boss. By the day I wanted to tell her she was very busy, so I said that I would tell her the next day. But all of a sudden, around 4 p.m., which is unusual that she's still at work, I saw her coming. I said, hey, I thought you've left. Are you still at work? She said, yes. I said, oh, I have something I wanted to share with you, but I don't know whether you have the time. I said, for how many minutes? I said, it's not going to take your time, maybe three minutes. So I took her to my locker. And I opened my locker and I had two of the skirt, blue and white. I showed her the skirt. I said, please, this is what I got. So I said, I don't wear trousers. And I don't really feel comfortable wearing trousers at the workplace. I said, please, I want to ask for your permission. Will you permit me? I already prayed this. I was just trying to put it like a question, but I know it's done. <laughs> I said, will you permit me to put this on in the workplace? She looked at me with such empathy in her eyes and the, the heart I had and how far I have gone to bring it. And she looked at me so compassionately and told me, yes, you can. Hallelujah. She said, yes, you can. I said, don't bother. I'm going to take care of the washing myself. He said, just make sure you don't send it to the other uniform because it's not going to come back. He said, but then when we have the washing room, the laundry room here, instead of you taking it home, you can wash it in the laundry room and there is an iron there, iron it and get it away. Beloved, to the glory of God, I have bypassed the protocol in Finland to be the first place at the workplace to be putting on skirts. The next day when I came in on my skirt, all my colleagues were like, hmm, what was this? It's what I was saying. But after that, they started getting used to me. And some of them said, they said that, oh, maybe we'll consider having skirts for summer. You know what? If they consider having skirts for summer, and then it will not be a, a problem to wear the skirt during winter. So to the glory of God, I want to give God praise because today, the Bible says, if your heart is so condemning you, then God, great God is greater than our conscience. If your conscience can condemn you. So I want to give God thanks today because my conscience in that aspect is no longer condemning you. The Lord has delivered me in that aspect. He has proven himself mighty. And I'm so grateful to the Lord. And I just want to encourage every one of us. They say that whether there is a will, there is a way. Beloved, God is more than able to do it. So I just want to bless God for that testimony. I thank God for that. So I'm going to come back for the, to the message of today, which says, what are you doing with your talent? What are you doing with the talent? And I will be using this word interchangeably because when we look at the definition of talent, it says a talent is used, talent, it says a talent is a special ability that allowed someone to do something. A talent is a special ability that allowed someone to do something. You can also have talents in the days of old. Talents could also be as a currency. So that's why I say I'll be using these two words, talent as ability and talents as a currency to trade with. I will be using the words interchangeably. He said, a talent is useless unless it is used. Hallelujah. The Amen. talent you got, whether be it in the form of currency or whether be it in the form of ability, is useless until you use it. I'm going to be taking our anchor scriptures from Matthew chapter 25 from verse number 14 to 30. Please, if somebody is there, help us to read. Matthew chapter, Matthew 25, verse 14 to 30. A quick reader, please, if you find it. I can read from here. It says, For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country, who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. And unto one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one to every man according to his same 
supernatural ability and straight away took his journey. The 16th, then he that had received the five talents went and traded with the same and made them other five talents. The 17th, and likewise he that had received two, he also gained other two. But he that had received one went and dig in the earth and hid his lot's money. After a long time, the Lord of those servants cometh and reckoned with them. And so he that had received five talents came and brought other five talents, saying, Lord, thou deliverest unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained beside them five more talents. Verse 21. His Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. Verse 21. He also that had received two talents came and said, Lord, thou deliverest unto me two talents. Behold, I have gained two other talents beside them. His Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. Verse 24, then he which had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew thee that thou art an hard man, reaping where thou hast not sown and gathering where thou hast not straw. And I was afraid and went and hid thy talent in the earth. Lo, there thou hast that is thine. His Lord answered and said unto him, Thou wicked and slothful servant, thou knowest that I reap where I sow not, and gather where I have not strawed. Thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to the exchangers, and then at my coming I should have received mine own with usury. Take therefore the talents from him, and give it unto, unto which had ten talents. For unto every one that had shall be given, and he shall, have, he shall have abundance. But from him that had not shall be taken away even that which he had. And cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness, there shall be weeping and snatching of teeth. Hallelujah. Here is the parable of the talent. He said, he gave unto every man according to his ability. To some, he gave five. To another, he gave two. And to another, he gave one. And we see the testimony that he gave it and he went on his journey and he came back to reckon with those servants. Hallelujah. Beloved, I want to bring this message today in practical daily living. We are both in the body and we are also in the spirit. The Bible makes us understand that we are in the world, but not of the world. We are pilgrims on this earth and we are traveling along this earth, going to our long-awaited home. But we are in the world. Beloved, so long as we are in the world, even though not of the world, there are some things we must do because we find ourselves in this world. Hallelujah. We are not just spirits. We are both spirits and we are both in the body and the physical. So, so long as we are here on earth, our presence on this earth, we are no accident. God didn't create us and set us to this earth because he lacked what to do with us. He created us for a purpose. And with him, there is no coincidence, accident, or chance. So our existence on earth, on planet, at, at a point in time like this, is not by coincidence. God brought us here for a purpose. And we must make sure that we accomplish that purpose before we go back home to give an account of what we did with our lives on this earth. In the book of John chapter 17, verse 15, Jesus Christ was praying for his disciples. Please, if you find it, read it. And first read that, please. John chapter 17, verse 15.
John 17, 15, I read. Yes. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but thou, but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil. Hallelujah. This is Jesus Christ crying for his disciples. He never told the Father, Father, because I'm going to leave the world, I want you to, to, to take them along with me. I want you to take them along with me now, now like this. We should go together, you know. He said he's not praying that they should take them out of the world because they got work to do on earth. But that they should, they should keep them from the wicked one. So, why Jesus was going, the disciples still had work to do on earth. But he prayed a prayer for them that they should be kept from the evil one. And the only reason why Jesus kept them was because they had work to do. John chapter 9, verse 4. If you find it, please wait. But if I get there before you, I'm going to wait. John, John chapter 9, 9 verse 4. Oh, I read. Yes. I must walk the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can walk. Hallelujah. This is Jesus himself, the Lord God Almighty himself. He said he must walk the works of him that sent him while it is day. Beloved, the reason for which God created us and put us upon planet Earth is to work. Whatever work it may be, whether spiritual or physical work. When he created the first man, Adam, and in the garden, Adam was tending the garden. Adam had an assignment to do. Adam, God made the animals and brought it onto Adam, and Adam started his work by naming one animal after another. We were created, God created us and kept us in this world so that we could work. Now I want us to look at Psalms 104, verse 23. Psalms 104, verse 23. I read from this end. It said, man goeth forth unto his work and to his labor unto the evening. Hallelujah. Man will go unto his work, to his labor until the evening. No wonder another scripture says that the sleep of a laboring man shall be sweet. Beloved, if you are not the type that is laboring, <laughs> your sleep will not be sweet. I remember the days back in Cameroon, after leaving the university, I had no work to do. And I was sharing an apartment with one sister who was um, like a babysitter in, so, in, 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 a, in somebody's house. She would leave very early for work and she would come back by 5 p.m. And by the time we just sit to discuss one or two minutes, poof, she's gone up for sleep. She would start snoring on the chair. And I begin to wonder how can she just sit like this and just start snoring? Beloved, the Bible says that the sleep of a laboring man shall be sweet. When you go out in the day and labor and come back in the evening, then you have no choice than to have a sweet sleep. But while she was out in the day laboring, beloved, I had no appointment to attend unto. So I might have slept until 10 a.m. in the morning, and not only because I lack sleeping, but I'm sleeping and I'm thinking of what I'm going to feed my child. I'm sleeping and I'm thinking by the time I wake up, how is life going to be like? I am sleeping and I'm thinking people have activities to go on to. I have nothing. So I may pass the whole day sleeping until 12 o'clock. I'm waking up and wondering. And when it is time in the night to sleep, I don't have sleep to sleep. Beloved, when you don't do the things that you have to do at the right time, it's going to cost a it's gonna, there's going to be a problem in, in your life. God made man and fashioned man in such a way that the day is meant for man to walk and the night for us to sleep and rest for the next day. Why am I being stopped? Yes, it is true that we are preparing for heaven. <clears throat> it is true that we are waiting for the Lord to come and take us. 
But beloved, let me assure you that while we are waiting for the Lord, we don't have to fold our arms and sit because the Messiah is coming. I want you to look at me. Look with me. Turn with me to the book of Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24. I'm going to start reading from verse number 38. Matthew chapter 24 from verse number 38. Beloved, if you find it with it. I read. So for as the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking and marrying and giving into marriage until the day that Noah entered into the act. And knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Then shall two be in the field, and one shall be taken, and the other left. Two women shall be grinding at the meal, the one shall be taken, and the other left. Verse 42. It says, Watch therefore, for you know not what hour your Lord doth commit. In the days of the flood, it was business as usual. It said, In like manner, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. Two women will be in the field. What will they be doing in the field? They will be walking in the field. Another word, they will be in the field, they will be grinding. And then the flood came. So the love from this passage, it means love is going to be as usual. There is not going to be a standstill with the activities on earth. Before rapture, he says it will happen like a thief in the night. So people will be going about their daily businesses, and then the rapture will happen. So if business as usual, if the normal activities of the earth was going on, then beloved, we don't have to keep life on hold because the Lord is coming. We have to keep working with the talents and the abilities that God has bestowed onto us unto that last moment that the, that the Lord will appear. I have seen some people that watch and say, no, 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 Jesus is coming. And they have sold that house and they don't, they don't have where to live. Beloved, the fact that the Messiah is coming does not mean that we should put life in a standstill. The man went on a far journey and he kept talents to his servant. And he told them, what did he say? He said, trade with it until I come. Beloved, that's why I started, I titled the message with the question, what are you doing with your talent? There were three people in this parable that were given talent. Two, maximize and traded with the talent. But one mm, did absolutely nothing with the talent. Took it, went and dug a hole, and buried it inside, and said that the wicked servant, by the time you come, I'll, I'll give you the, the same talent you give me, I'll give it unto you. It says he gave to every man according to his several abilities. He gave to everyone according to his several abilities. Beloved, let's get this and get this well. Some had five. One man had five talents. Another man had just two. And the other one had one. He gave to every man according to their several abilities. Beloved, what are you doing with the talent that God has given unto you? I am talking in the aspect on the spiritual and the physical aspect. Because when you are in the world, there are some things we need to do while we are in the world. Beloved, you know if you are the one that is in a rental house, you're not going to say because you are a child of God. At the end of the month, by the time your landlord appears or your landlady appears for rent, you will speak in tongues, in Jesus' name, the bill has been paid. You're not going to do that. 
Yes, you are spirit. You are spiritual. But you're not going to do that. There are some things you need to take care of. Jesus told the disciples, he said, give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar and to God what belongs to God. While we are in this body, this body needs to eat. The body needs to be fed. So there are some things we have to be doing. And at the end of this passage, in Matthew chapter 25, remember that's our uncle's scripture. Matthew chapter 25, verse 14 to 30. Even though they had different abilities, some had five, some had two, some had one. Yet, when the master came back and reckoned with them, hallelujah, beloved, there is a day of reckoning. There is a day that we will stand to give an account of the talents that God bestowed on us. Whether it be in spiritual talents or physical talents, we are going to be standing before the judgment seat of the Lord. We're going to be standing before the righteous judge to reckon with him to give an account of what we did with the talent that he gave us. Remember Jesus Christ told his disciples, I think it's still in Matthew. He says, if you give anything unto this little one, you have given it unto me. Hallelujah. Yes, from verse 40. Verse 40, Matthew chapter 25, verse 40, it says, And the king shall answer and say unto thee, Verily I say unto you, In so much as you have done it unto one of this list of this my brethren, you have done it unto me. Then shall he say also unto them, On the left hand, depart. So okay, verse 39 says, Or oh, when shall, when shall we be sick or in prison and came unto thee? Now, the various talents and abilities that God has given unto us is to be used to save our brethren. We are not an island. Beloved, God never created us for ourselves. Like this statement that most people use on Facebook, me, myself, and I, that is pride. You are not all about you. You, you in the first person, you in the second person, you in the third person. No, it's not just all about you, you, you. God created us and gave us abilities and talents so we can use to save our fellow human beings with it. And it is with what we have that we are saving our fellow human beings that is going to be building for us treasures in heaven. Jesus Christ says in Matthew chapter 6 verse 20, he said, do not store up for thyself treasures on this earth. Beloved, the Bible says we should not store up for ourselves treasures on this earth. But we need to get the treasures on this earth. But anyway, we store it in heaven. So the treasures you will get on earth, and then you will store it in heaven. For example, you somebody, somebody that was in need, out of the work of your hands, you worked, you were able to get a salary. And you had some money in your hands and you saw somebody in it and you blessed that person. Beloved, that is treasure you got on it. But sowing it into the life of that person, according to Matthew chapter 25 from verse 39, you are saving that treasures in heaven. So when you do that, it is recorded in heaven. I was listening to one man of God that was testifying that God revealed to him that there was a missionary that was suing so much and there was the, and money was given to them to buy a new carpet because they had a very old carpet. And the same hour that money was given, a missionary called from somewhere and said, no, they are in it. And it was the same amount that the daughter-in-law gave them to buy the carpet. They said, they just took the money and sent it to that missionary. Now, that is somebody that is physical money. But now giving it to that person, they have sought for themselves treasure in heaven. And said they were they, they saw the house of that person in, in heaven. And they saw the precious blood because of that sacrifice that that family made. There was a special marble on the house in heaven. Beloved, 
If you cannot walk on earth, then I say, I tell you the truth, you have nothing to say. You have no treasure to keep in heaven. Whether it be in the physical abilities that God has given unto us or the spiritual abilities. Hallelujah. Most of us, we do, it's, just, it's not just all about spirit, 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 spirit. No, we are both in the spirit and in the flesh. And we need to get these things balanced. Beloved, sometimes there's so many trouble in the, in the church of God today because of the lack of balance between the physical work and spiritual work. I remember I, I went to Bible school 2002. And I never, never graduated to take the certificate because I didn't have the money to pay the certificate. At that time, I just lost my mother, so I didn't have the money. But when I saw some of the things that my colleagues were doing, when they have called to pray, sometimes they were like breakthrough, 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 breakthrough. That's the how they used to go. Breakthrough, breakthrough, breakthrough. Most of the pastors, most of my colleagues, they're all pastors, many of them in Cameroon. Now, because this one has something that can be provided, they will rather go to pray to somebody that has substance, I mean physical substance, to maybe pay that transport, than go to somebody that does not have something. And when I look at it, I was troubled in my spirit. I told the Lord something. I said, so, so God, I don't want to preach the gospel out of luck. I don't want to preach the gospel. I don't want to come into the ministry because I don't have anything to do. Beloved, there is a person, I don't know whether it's in Jeremiah. It says, and that's the, the prophets, they will quit and say, I am no longer prophet. Maybe I am good at trading in the market. Beloved, there is a lot of problems today in the body of Christ that because maybe some people that were supposed to be trading with the talents that God had given to them. I mean, physical trading. They have left it and they have maybe taken the Bible because maybe the Bible is easy. Let me just hold the Bible, you know, with the Bible is the word of God. Yes, the Bible says if, if, if somebody ministers to you in the spiritual, yes, you can minister to that in the physical. Now, but I want to say something that for you to say that, no, I'm not going to do something in the physical. I'm just going to get into full-time ministry. Beloved, you must be sure that God has called you into full-time ministry. Because if God has not called you into, it is good to win souls. The Bible says, he that winning souls it is wise. But winning souls, working or getting a physical job does not stop you from winning souls. Which I just said the sister of the, the testimony of our sister, Sister Fisher, that she's working and there is a time she said that today I am going to win souls. Yes, she has a physical job she's doing. We all have physical jobs we are doing, but it's a time to win. So now that is the spiritual aspect of the talent we are using. Still sowing and still preserving our treasures in heaven. But now, most sometimes the Christians of now our days, they have forgotten about the physical. They have forgotten about the are some responsibilities that as long as we are in the earth, we have to take care of that responsibilities and they have all been hiding behind the Bible. And there is a danger in doing that. Why? Because if you say you're going to be going full-time in ministry and God has not called you to be full-time in ministry, then your provision is not going to be complete. No wonder we have people today that can use the Bible to use scripture that will suit what they want. Now, because you need to take care of your bills, yes, the bills are there, the rents are there, the children are there, they have to go to school. And because you have come to give yourself in full time, maybe that God has not called you on full time, now you have to devise means and strategies on how to get money to take care of the bills. And this message is not for private interpretation, it is a general message. Hallelujah. As I'm ministering, I'm also talking to myself. Now, now come and begin to devise techniques. No, the Lord is saying, beloved, if it is God that called you in full-time ministry. I was listening to, is it Daniel Grover? A prayer worker, he's quite an old man. He was, he was a boss in his office and he quit that electronics job. He was having a good money with 13 children. The Lord told him to leave his work and go for full-time ministry. 
And this man, he said the day he left his work, he had never ever asked somebody for his need. Beloved, you know somebody that God has called in full-time ministry, they will not tell you about their needs. Why? Prophet Owo said something. He said, if it is God that has called you, then to your God belongs silver and gold. And he is more than able to provide. So if it is God that has called you in full-time ministry, then God will definitely provide for your needs. You will not need to be devising strategy on how to provide for yourself. Because God has called you into full-time ministry. And he will definitely provide. Beloved, we look at the disciples. Now I'm talking about talent. What are you doing with your talent? When Jesus Christ started calling his disciples, they were working. They were fishers of men. And he called them. He said, from now, Peter James, he said, you will now become fishers of men. They were working. They were fishermen. Fishing for fish to earn a living. But when God encountered them and called them out of their fishing job, he said that they would quit doing fishing for fish and it will be time to fish for human beings. And when they were about to go on their journey, he said, do not bother about to take brother your purse, neither two coats or two sandals, for a workman is worthy of his reward. Now, they have been called in full-time ministry. Jesus told them not to bother about the physical. He called them out of that job. They were earning a living, but he called them out into full-time ministry. And we can see how much there was provision for them. Now, we see that the disciples, there were 12 of them, but in the book of as the Bible says, the disciples were gathered with the other women. We see the testimony of the other women that were supporting the ministry of Jesus. Beloved, these people who were supporting the ministry, they were not called into full-time ministry. But they were supporting the ministry with their abilities. Hallelujah. So they were physically working and now supporting the ministry, supporting the disciples with what they are earning because the disciples were called in full-time ministry. Now they knew that the disciples had need and they will go to sow. Beloved, I believe that if God is the one to bless you, <laughs> you don't need to devise strategies and techniques. Why? Because if God wants to bless you, he will take, um, for example, I'm in Finland, he may touch somebody in the U.S. and give that person no sleep like it was the king. When it was time for him to bless Mordecai, the Bible says the king could not sleep. And he passed his night like watching until he discovered that what has been done for Mordecai. Beloved, if God has called you into full-time ministry and asked you to abandon your physical job, then he will not give peace. He will trouble some people and they will not have peace until they bless you. That is how you know that God is providing. Now I'm talking about personal needs. Hallelujah. It is okay to talk about the needs of the ministries, but I mean to talk about personal needs, many people, many false prophets have entered into the body of Christ today. Oh, the Lord is telling me, oh, you have to buy me this car, you have to do me this. No, those people, they were good to have gone out there in the market and used that talent to be buying and selling, trading. <laughs> they were good at that. But when you come into the ministry and you are doing full-time, well, God will touch the heart of people to bless you. I know God has not called me into full-time ministry. That's why I'm, I'm working hard. I made up my mind, beloved, I've seen lack. And I told myself, I have to use the abilities and the talents that God has bestowed onto me. Look at what it says in this passage. At the end of the day, the person who had five talents, the Bible said when the master came, he said, this is the five talents you gave me. I have made five more. They were trading. They were trading. They were trading, buying and selling. It might be physical, it might be spiritual. So they were working. There was an exchange. So they were trading with the talent that God has given them. And when the master came, they had an account. Beloved, you are not just here to fulfill a space on this earth. 
You have abilities. You have talents that God has bestowed onto you. You know, there is a difference between abilities and talents, but they are similar. You know, I mean, potentials. Potential is the abilities that may be developed and leads to future successes or usefulness. No, we have hidden potentials in us. And when you develop those hidden potentials, it will develop and you will be successful. The Bible says in the book of Deuteronomy that I will bless the work of your hands. Beloved, if you don't have work to do with your hands, then you don't have blessings. I will bless the work of your hands. For him that is not doing something with his hand, that person cannot receive blessings. You might be called full time in the ministry. That's the work of your hands. Yes, and God will bless you. It might be that maybe you have to get a job physically and God will bless you. Now, in Matthew chapter 24, the Bible says there was, it was business as usual. But there was one thing that is recorded, recorded in verse 42. It says, watch therefore, for you know not what hour. So in everything we are doing, beloved, it's not that we should do, we should quit doing work. But in the work we are doing, we should be watchful in what we are doing. We should make sure that what we are doing is giving glory unto the Lord. Because at any time, the Lord can come. So it doesn't stop us from working. But we are working with the consciousness that is the last moment on earth. Beloved, there is a problem that I see often in Europe. And I, t- I spoke to myself that I don't want to be like that. I have seen hard times, challenges back in Africa when I had a child to take care of. And I had nothing. I told myself. The pastor was preaching one day. He said, if you look at the choir, majority, I don't know why they always accuse women. There are also men that are lazy. It's not only women. <laughs> Majority of these women, if you ask them, they want to get married, they want to get married. The pastor asked a question. What can you contribute in that marriage? That time I was having a very little job. That time I was now having a teaching job. But before I had a job, beloved, I had to go to a, an electronic shop with that guy. Sometimes, if I, sometimes we might not even have up to two euros or five euros the whole day. And I'll have to trade back home a university, somebody that's been in the university. And I will sit there because I don't want to stay home. But beloved, I will trek for a good distance to go and sit in that place. But one blessed day, even in that small place, one man came to repair his TV because I was like the sick today. And that man was a brother too. He said, oh, look at this, my sister. She's been in the university. She can teach English language. Your brother has a school. Can you connect her to that school? He said, oh, why not? Yes, we need an English teacher. It was in Douala, in the, in the Francophone site. Beloved, that's how from that little electronic place, I got a teaching job to teach English language in a French school. It was a little school, but why I was teaching in that little school, another teacher came from a bigger school and asked me, what are you doing here? He connected me to that bigger school. So before I left Cameroon, I was teaching in three different schools. But it took me to have left the house to go somewhere, even when it didn't seem like it. Sometimes I would sit there, I would cry. Sometimes I would be going back home, tears would be coming out of my eyes. I said, God, help me. But in that little place, there was a connection. The word of God says that whatever thing our hand finds to do, we should do it. Beloved, I'm here to encourage us as Christians to work with our hands. Hallelujah. To work with our hands. The Bible says it is more blessed to give than to receive. If you work with your hands, you are a more of a blessing. Because you can reach out to somebody. Somebody can go and say, I am in need. And you reach out to that person. And you gain satisfaction. That you are creating an impact in the life of somebody. But if you don't work, you will not have to give. And you will only be desiring that people should give you. Beloved, we were created to work. Let us work. I was, I'm reading a book right now. I was watching that guy, he's a Jewish guy, a Jewish rabbi, on with so so the supernatural. And this guy was talking about the business secrets of the Bible from the Bible. He's a Jew. You know, Jews are very well to people. So um, I decided to go check out that book. And that man said something 
in that book. He said, if there is not a word for a Hebrew word, if there, is, if there is no word in Hebrew for something, it means that thing does not exist. See, if there is no word in Hebrew for something, that thing doesn't exist. Then he gave an example of the English word to win money and to gain money. No, to win money and to earn money. He said the English language distinguished winning money and gaining money. So you can win money from going to play the poker. Or you can go and do whatever thing and you will win money. Yes. And then there is earning money. He also gave an example in that word in French, gagner de l'argent. That's the word in French, pour gagner de l'argent. It just said to gain money. It does not explain whether it is earning money or winning money. In French, it does not distinguish. But in the English language, there is a difference between winning money and earning money. Now, he said that in the Bible, there is no Hebrew word for winning money. He said the only Hebrew word for money is to earn money. So he was talking about the 90 elements to, of, of, of wealth. So the Bible lays it down that we cannot win money. The only thing we have to do is to earn money. Hallelujah. So if we earn money, it means there is no free money. There is no free money. But the truth of the matter is that today in Europe, I tell you there is free money. <laughs> there is plenty of free money in Europe. I'm giving an example. People back in Africa, they might not experience this, but most of us that are in Europe, we understand it. There is free money in Europe. And sometimes people are tempted to get that free money and say, oh, but what's the problem? If my house can be paid, if my bills can be paid, yes, there is child support, good, fine. If the children can be taken care of, then I don't need to stress myself, you know, I don't really need to stress myself. I have seen people here who will not go out to work. They sit and they calculate the, the, the benefits from the government at the end of the day. Beloved, that's not the life of a Christian. That's not the life of a Christian because that money, even though you, you, you have the, you, you the, the rights to, to, to get that money, you are not earning the money. You are not working for it. No, it's different from like people who were working and then they get bet. And then they have this money that they have to pay. Yes, fine. I am not trying to say that it's bad. No, 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 it's not bad. Though. But now you have earned that money in some way because while you are working, you are paying taxes. Okay? So you get the money back. But if you have not worked for that money and you get that money, beloved, it's a temptation of the devil. Why? Because that free money can lead you into sluggishness. That free money can make you to be lazy because you find no need to work. But beloved, if you are not working, why it is day? Is it in the light that you're going to work? If you can't work when you are 30, in your 40s, in your 50, is it when you are 60 years that you are losing your strength that you want to go to work? Beloved, as children of God, we are supposed to be working hard while it is day because the night is coming that we cannot work. When you work during your day, when you go on retirement, yes, you have the retirement benefit. No, the retirement benefit is the money you work for and you gather it and you keep it for retirement benefit. But if in the course of the day, in the course of your morning and in your afternoon, you didn't do any work, then you will just be living with hand to mouth if the government even have to give some little money. Here in Europe, Africa, nobody will give you if you have not, never been to work. Hallelujah. So today I want to talk about practical living. Most often we're like spirit, spirit, spirit. Today I want to bring it into the practical realm, into the physical realm. We are in the world. And there are things we need to do. Why in the world? Hallelujah. It says in the book of Proverbs that a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the arms, and poverty will take you over like an armed man. <laughs> Beloved, if you don't want that you are not doing something, poverty will take over you. There will be things you want to do, but I remember the days that I had no job. Oh, I will cry. 
Because there are things I want to do, but I can't do it. It acts like a limitation. You are limited. You can't move. But if you are able to work, you can be a blessing unto others. You can say today, I want to go for a holiday. You can take a holiday, pay your life and go. You can do whatever thing you want to go. But if you're not doing something, and even if the government is the one giving you money, then the government now become a ministry, a monetary spirit behind you. Yes, because yeah, for example, here in Finland, by the time the government will give you money, they will be checking what is entering your account. You don't have to. You see people that are taking money from the government. Eh? You can't send the money in the account. No, 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 no. Don't send money in my account. Because the lives are being controlled. Beloved, we don't want to live at the mercy of others. The life are being controlled. You can't really do things freely. By the time you do this, they say, oh, you did that. Even when they give you the money, and at the end of the day, they calculate that. They say, no, 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 no. We gave you too much of money. Now you have to pay it back. What a life. Money that you've already spent, you have to pay it back. In this passage, this parable, they were trading with their talents. Now, the question you want to ask yourself is like, what is my talent? How many talents do I have? Because there is another problem if you don't know how many talents you got. For example, if you have one talent, now let's just forget about the person with one talent, because the person with one talent actually did nothing with the one talent. Let, let's talk about the people with two talents and five talents. It is bad for us to compare ourselves. Why? Because if you have been given five talents, and another man has been given two talents. Now, if you are the one that God has bestowed you with five talents, and you are looking at a person that is maximizing and utilizing and trading with the two talents, you might be tempted to be jealous. You might be tempted to be jealous. Oh, see that one. But that person is only trading with two talents. And maybe you have five talents. And you don't even know you've got five talents. And you may tend to be underestimating yourself with somebody that has got one talent. So for us to be able to know what talent we have, you must first of all go before the Lord and ask the Lord to reveal to you the talents and the hidden potentials that God has bestowed on you. There is a statement that said, when purpose is not known, abuse is inevitable. If you don't know how much talent you have, you will not know how to trade with that talent. Hallelujah. Talents, it says it can be special abilities, different abilities. Now let's look at Exodus chapter 31. I want to read Exodus chapter 31, verse 2 to 5. Please, if you find it, read it. Exodus chapter 31, verse 2 to 5. Somebody is there, read, please. Are we all there? Please, read if you find it. Exodus chapter 1, verse 2 to 5. 2 to 5, amen. See, I have called by name Bezel, the son of Uri, the son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah. And I have filled him with the Spirit of God in wisdom and in understanding and in knowledge and in all manner of workmanship to devise cunning works, to walk in gold and in silver. Yeah, okay, yes, continue. And in brass. That's four, yes, continue. And in cutting of stones to set them, and in carving of timber to work in all manner of workmanship. Hallelujah. That is God who called the Zelea. <laughs> That's the anointing I'm using on my cakes by mango. Hallelujah. You see, he had called the Zelea, and he has bestowed him with skills and knowledge in all manner of workmanship. Cutting of wood and silver. Now, he had a job for Bezalel, for him to, um, 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 to make the, 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 the furniture in the tabernacle. Now, imagine if after God had bestowed this anointing and these abilities on Bezalel, and then Bezalel said, ah, God, he shot, go on with. And then Bezalel folded his arms at this and sat. There would have been no furniture in the tabernacle. He was given those skills and abilities so that he could make the furniture that would be put in the tabernacle. 
Now put yourself in this place of desire. Now if you take the man with the one talent and we put the man in the place of desire, he would have folded his arms and not do anything for the tabernacle. What a waste of resources. God is not a waster. When he bestows his talents and potentials in us, he's expecting us to utilize the talents. And I must tell you the truth, there are some places, being at the right place at the right time, there are some places, like somebody put it, that carries your divine DNA. You need to get connected to that place for you to be able to bear out the potentials that are in you. And if you don't find yourself in that place, you might not be able to fully utilize those potentials. I was, first of all, before I really got this message of holiness, I was doing hair, planting hair breads. I didn't go to any salon to learn it. I learned it on my daughter's hair. So when I came to Europe, ooh, good source of money. So I was also buying them. I was putting them, and I was also planting breads. Sometimes when I'm out from work, I would sit like have six hours, seven hours, do bread, 60 euros, put it in my pocket, chicken change, use it in how I want. But when I come to the consciousness that God, it doesn't really give glory to God. I let it go, but I didn't just let it go. I said, Father, I need to work with my hands. Now, I have let go of this weeping and these things of properties of Jezebel. Now, what will you put in my hand for me to be able to do? I went before the Lord in prayers. And how I started making cakes, I don't know how. But I realized that the talents were coming with as, as, as time went on. And today it is an established company. And I don't have enough time to put in it now. But it is an established and recognized company in film. When I have the time for it, I do it. Hallelujah. So, beloved, why am I saying this? Not to exhort myself when I'm trying to encourage us. Because there have been some days where I desired to work, but there was nothing to do. It wasn't a good experience. You have a very low self esteem When somebody asks you, sister, what do you do for a living? You know that question becomes an offensive question. If you don't have anything you are doing, what do you do for a living? You don't know what to say. Because you don't know what you are doing for a living. How are you ending your living? Sometimes it is not just all about, oh, maybe like the pastor who said that you young ladies, you just want to get married, want to get married. What can you contribute to that marriage? Even as a single, I am single, and I want to talk to us singles today because most often we talk much on the marital aspect. Yes, the people that are married, I find the Bible says marriage is a wonderful thing, honorable inside of the law. But marriage is not a prerequisite to make heaven. Even as a single sister, you don't sit and you begin to think, ah, oh, you're just waiting for that prince charming that will just show up and take care of all your bills and you know, you won't need to worry <laughs> because your husband is going to be taking care of the bills and just pay the bills and you just relax. What are you doing? Even as a single, be doing something you are because these days you people you should be able to be adding. Nobody wants a deficit. What can you do for yourself? Hallelujah. What are you doing with the works of your hands? Be the kind of virtuous women we are talking about, like the theme of 2016. Virtuous women with a distinction. Now let me talk to my sisters. You, you cannot just be a, not just a virtuous woman, but a virtuous woman with a distinction, it means you are that special. It means there are some extra things you are doing. Hallelujah. When we see the virtuous woman in the Bible, in, in, in Proverbs chapter 31, look at the qualities of that woman. She is married, yes. But because of her, the husband is not at the gate. So when that pastor said that thing in Cameroon, I was so challenged in my spirit. And Instead of Lord husband, Lord husband, I changed my plan to him. I said, Father, make me a virtuous woman. This is 2006, 2005 in Cameroon. Lord, make me a virtuous woman. So every time I will go and read Proverbs 31, and I will be looking at the qualities of that Proverbs 31 woman, and I will tell God, 
Even before the Rosba will meet me, if he meets me fine, if he doesn't meet me, if he comes, he's a plus. If he doesn't come, there is no minus. But I will be this woman. I made up my mind that I will work hard to become this woman. Beloved, where there is a will, there is a way. This person in this parable took his talent and went and hid it. Now he went and hid the talent. Maybe you are the one you might say, ah, maybe I didn't go to school. I am not educated. So I can't, I can't really work. Maybe that's the way you are hiding your own talent. I am not educated. Beloved, it's not only all about education. You can work with your hands without even education. The rich people, people that are making money, they have never been to school. Somebody is doing the accounting for them. But they had the ability or the idea to do something with their hands, working with their hands. Beloved, if you have not been to school, ask God, what can I use my hands to do? Some things don't need a diploma in school. Some things don't need a certificate to do it. You can just do it. Ask the Lord and the Lord will reveal to you. Now, this person complained that I just have one talent. And he went and hit the one talent. Now, the truth of the matter is that why we should not compare ourselves as Christians is because if you see in this parable, the person that had five talents with the one that had one talent, they all received the same reply. Let's look at it. Let's go back to Matthew chapter 25. They all received the same reward. It didn't say that, no, this one had but two talents and that other one had but five talents. No, they all received the same answer. Let's look from verse 29. It says, and the Lord answered and said, verse 26, unto him. No, that's, that's in wicked seven. And the Lord said unto him, well done. Now, this is Matthew chapter 25, verse 23. I'm reading. So the Lord said unto him, well done. Good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. Hallelujah. This is the one that received two talents. The same answer applied for the one that received five talents in 21. It says, His Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. Both he that had two talents and he that had five talents, and they both traded with the talent according to their abilities, they received a single reward. Well done, good and faithful servant. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. So that's why we don't need to compare ourselves. But according to our abilities, let us do what let us use and trade with the talent that God has bestowed on us. Without looking at that person, oh, that person is sad. Because you might not know how many talents that person has got. Go before the Lord. He is your creator, he's your maker. He knows what he has bestowed in you. Go before him and ask him, Lord, what is my talent? How many talents do I have? What are the things you have put in me? By the time you start asking questions, you get answers. Ask questions of inquiry, so inquire of the Lord. He's your maker, he knows you better. And he will provide for you, he will tell you the secrets. Hallelujah. I want to look at 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 1 to 7. If you find it really, please. Let us look at an example there. 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 1 to 7. Because sometimes people despise what they have. 2 Kings. Chapter 4, verse 1 to 7. You find it. If I get there before you, I'm going to read. Second King 4, 1 to 7, I read. Yes. Now, now, there cried a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophet unto Elisha, saying, Thy servant, my husband, is dead, and thou knowest that thy servant did fear the Lord, and this creditor is come to take unto him my two sons to be bondmen. And Elisha said unto her, What shall I do for thee? Tell me, what hast thou in the house? And she said, Thy handmaid hath not anything in the house, save a pot of oil. Then he said, Go, borrow thee vessels abroad of all thy neighbors, empty, even empty vessels, Borrow not a few. 
Yeah. And when thou art coming, thou shalt shut the door upon thee and upon thy sons, and shalt pour unto pour out into all those vessels, and thou shalt set aside that which is full. So she went from him and shut the door upon her and upon her sons who brought the vessels to her. And she poured out, and it came to pass, when the vessels were full, that she said unto her son, Bring me yet a vessel. And he said unto her, There is not a vessel more. And the oil stayed. Then she came and told the man of God, and he said, Go sell the oil and pay thy debt, and leave thou and thy children of the rest. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> Beloved, look at the servant of the, of, of the Lord, the prophet of the Lord. It was not impossible. For this servant of God to make it sound like this, <laughs> and money appear from heaven. Hallelujah. <laughs> then, then, then God will be like a magician. It is true that Jesus Christ sent his disciples to say, Go, there is money in the fish. <laughs> Just go and collect it and bring it. That's the master of the universe. Hallelujah. But as for us, we will need to, it is not impossible. God can still do it. But now, here comes this woman to a prophet of the Lord, and he did not say, oh, in the name of Jesus Christ, I carry this bundle of money and give you. No. He asked the woman, what have you got? The first thing is like, your servant has got nothing. And then she remembered, maybe I have some oil in the house. Maybe you are the one that said, oh, I have nothing. No, there is something you got in the house to trade with. You have something, there is something, there is something, there is something you have that you can trade with. He says, go, gather the vessels and begin to pour. So if this woman had 10 containers, the oil only suffice for the 10 containers. But it's just that the woman doesn't already know the second. So you had borrowed all the containers she could. But let me tell you that if the containers were like 2,000 of them, more than what she had, they would have still been oil. Flow. God is a God of miracle, but God is not a magician. So people go to prophet of the Lord today and they expect the Lord to do a magic cap and they get money. That is witchcraft. Now the prophet sent her because the Bible says he will bless the work of your hands. Now she had oil here in the house. She should have said, I don't have anything. But now, okay, I have oil. Okay, go and trade with it. Trade with it. Sell the oil, get money, and pay your bills, and live with the rest with your children. So the lady had oil, but maybe she didn't have something like rice. She had the money, she paid her debt, and she used part of that money to buy rice to feed the children. So she was trading with the oil. So beloved, you don't have any excuse. You don't have any excuse to say you don't have anything. There is always something. For example, like for, for the people that have given birth in Europe, it is nine months. You have the maternity leave for nine months. You have to take care of the baby for nine months. After nine months, they provide you with a daycare. For those that have the papers anyway, they provide you with a daycare to go and give that child and go back to work. But some people like, no, I can't take my child to the daycare anyway, depending on your condition. But now, what I am trying to say is this. As children of God, living in holiness and righteousness, we should be able to be an example to the unbelievers out there. You see, the people of this world are wiser than the children of light. They should, it shouldn't be like that. We should be wiser than those children. So we should be able to work, beloved. And I, I'm here today to encourage us to work. Hallelujah. Let it be balanced. When it is time for work, go to work and work. When it is time for the service of the Lord, give ample time for the Lord. Because in Matthew, the business as usual, people were going about the normal businesses, taking care of their bills, taking care of the families, and then onto the fourth came. So we are in the world, beloved. We are not of the world. And so long as we are in the world, we are supposed to be working because man was created to work. If God has called you in full-time ministry, fine. He has called you. He's able to provide for you. I don't see it this with anybody else. He will provide for you if you have heard him well. That he has said, come into full-time ministry. 
But if you go there because you think that you may devise me, you will be surprised. And at the end of the day, you'll be squeezing honey and milk out of widows. But when let us be, they say it is more blessed to give than to receive. I shared something. They say it is good to see somebody smiling. But it's a wonderful thing to know that you are the reason behind the smile of somebody. Let us be the reason behind somebody's smile, beloved. I'm not going to take much of our time, but today I came up here to encourage us with practical living. This work is not just spirit, spirit. Now, to live practically as children of God that we are still on earth before the Lord comes. We all have 24 hours in a day. It depends on what you are doing with your own 24 hours. You know, there are sometimes I used to sleep when I have evening shifts. I may pray maybe to 2 a.m. like this or 3 a.m. like this so I can do things in the night. And I'm like, okay, I don't mind. I'm going to work by 1 o'clock so I can just relax and rest up to maybe 11 o'clock. So if I sleep at 3 o'clock, I want to catch up my seven hours. I can sleep from that time maybe to 10 o'clock. Why not? And then I wake up and go. But after I started school, <laughs> I realized that I don't really have that time. Yesterday, I had a lot of laundry because they are doing renovation in my place. And I can't use the washing machine. But the laundry was so much. And I had to go to work in the evening. And I told myself, today, you have to wake up at 8 o'clock. I told myself to get up at 8 o'clock. I woke up at 8 o'clock, even though it was hard. I went and I did laundry twice. Able to put some things in, in order in the house. And beloved, I felt so good. And something just came to my mind. I have done laundry. I washed clothes twice. I have cleaned the house. I even cooked. But if I was sleeping between that 8 and that 12 o'clock, nothing would have been done apart from sleep. <laughs> it's good sometimes there's some revelations. <laughs> but let the gyms come in the night. <laughs> But I, I, found, I felt good because now, imagine someone that is sleeping for those hours and somebody that is doing something practical. There was a time back in Cameroon, there is this lady that was even living with a boyfriend who later on abandoned her for a better lady that was working. But because she was living with this guy, she can't do anything. And um, my, 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 my man is going to take care of this. And I was just alone with my daughter struggling. So in whole, during holidays, as a private school, they didn't pay us salary. So I decided to be frank puff puff in the street with beans and, and, and pap to set during holidays so I can feed my daughter. So when I wake up at 6 o'clock, I make the plan, everything, I go and sell. Whether it is rain, whether it is sun, I will be under because the plan has been mixed. I will be coming back about 11 o'clock. By the time I'm coming back about 11 o'clock, that's the time she's waking up. And she gets angry. Ah, oh, this beans that you are doing, the water is smelling. Then this is that, that is that. Look, these are two people. One has been sleeping up to 11 o'clock, another went out and was profitable. And by the time I came, I come back at 11 o'clock, I can sleep and rest with peace and joy in my heart that I've been able, and like we see in French, point them as you mean. I've been able to make something for that day so I can rest in the afternoon. But if I was sleeping the whole morning time, sometimes I come back with 10,000, I come back with 5,000, I have done something for that day. Beloved, let's not give room for sleep. A little sleep, a little slumber, poverty will take you like an armor. man. Let us be able to maximize the 24 hours that God has been able to give to us and be a blessing to somebody out there. Hallelujah. Let's be a blessing. Be the reason for which somebody is smiling. That that friend of yours can call you, oh, look at the challenge I'm going through. And you are able to reach out. When I was in lack, I made a lot of covenant with the Lord. I said, God, the day you bless me, I will help you. And God heard my prayer. And today, the Bible says, pay your vows. Because he has no pleasure in the food. That when you make a vow, pay it. So he says, whatever your hand finds to do. Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 10. Whatsoever your hand finds to do. Beloved, let's do it. For us that are in Europe, let's not rely on the government. It is a sin before God. If you are able to do something and you're not doing it, the sin of omission. Unemployment, yes. But if you are able, go out, work for something, be a participant, be an actor, be the one that is contributing and not the one that is consuming all the time. 
Because by so doing, the Lord is going to bless us. Hallelujah. So, beloved, this is the message I'm bringing to us today. As I said it, it is not a message to be interpreted privately. Oh, like, oh, she's talking to me. No, I'm talking to you. I'm talking to myself. I just gave an example where I would have been sleeping or what I should have been doing something. So, let us show an example to the world. Let us be hard working. God created us and put us on earth to work, whether you like it or not. It depends on what the work you, the work you are doing. But that's some work that does not give God glory. That is something you should not find yourself doing. I was following up plenty here. I no longer play here. I'm done with that. I'm doing my cakes. <laughs> well, somebody made me, I make up, make up on the cakes and like, oh, this and that. If you don't put it, where do you wear it? I repented, God, forgive me of that. I'm done with that. If you say it is cake that has makeup, I will not do it. Period. I do something in my time. But now, let us glorify God in whatever thing we are doing. What are you doing with the talents? Now let's get the answer to the man who buried his talents. And I pray that it shall not be you and it shall not be me in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Now the person who had one talent, Matthew chapter 25, that should be in verse number 30. Hallelujah. If you find it with the place, I'm still flipping over there to go there. 26. His Lord answered and yes, said unto him. From there, let me see. Yes, yes, go ahead. Okay. His Lord answered and said unto him, Thou wicked and slothful servant, thou, know it, thou knewest that I reap where I sowed not, and gather where I have not stewed. Thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to the exchangers, and then at my coming I should have received my own with usury. Okay. Look at the response of somebody that will not use the talents. And look at the rewards and what awaits somebody that will not maximize the talents. Remember, we are building treasures. We are pilgrims on this earth. But our destination, we have to determine it from here. It says, and the answer said unto him, thou be wicked. You are wicked. If you are not working, you are wicked if you are not doing something profitable with your hands and you can do it. The Lord sees you as a wicked person. If you can work and you refuse to work, you are wicked. And slothful, lazy, it's a slothfulness. So you are not only wicked, it's an adjective that is used. Wicked. Slothfulness and unprofitable, good for nothing is bad. God have mercy on us. That we will not be good for nothing, servants. Wicked, slothful, and good for nothing. And look at the reward of a wicked, slothful, and good for nothing servant. Take therefore the talent from him and give it unto him that has it. For unto everyone. Where is it that he was cast on? And cast ye the unprofitable servants into outer darkness. They shall be weeping and snatching of it. Unprofitable servants. If you don't maximize the talents that has given to you. No, our life, we don't need like I am. We are here because we have to impact the life of others. And if you are not doing that, Heaven is considering you as a deficit. You are unprofitable to heaven. If you are supposed to be the one that will bless somebody, beloved, sometimes when you even go to go and preach, if somebody is hungry, you don't say the Lord bless you, the Lord is going to take your food. If you had something, remove that money and give that person. That person will be eating that food and then the person will hear your gospel. Eh? If somebody can be in league and not, and it's really chubby, and you can say, God bless you with this one. Then that person can listen to you and follow you and follow that your heart. But if you are the one that you don't have anything to do, and all you go and the Lord bless you, the Lord bless you, and you are just devising, looking for strategy on how, by the time you say the Lord bless you, you know, a workman is worthy of his word. If I give you spiritually, give me physically. You now begin to use the Bible to play for one night. Go have mercy on us in the mighty name of Jesus. Slothful, wicked, unprofitable servant. May we not be found addressed as wicked, 
slothful and unprofitable servants in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Now, before I leave, that's the end of the message. But I want to believe that somebody has gotten something. Maybe you have been working, but maybe you just need to work hard again. But you first of all need to ask God your potentials, the talent that he has bestowed on you. Is it five talent? Is it two talent? And make sure you don't be the person that has the one talent and you're burying that talent. Now we're going to pray. We first of all want to ask God for mercy. That Father, in any way I have been wicked, in any way I have been unprofitable, in any way I have been slothful, Lord, have mercy on me. You want to pray that prayer with me in the mighty name of Jesus? Open your mouth and let's pray in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. My Father, my God, we are asking God for mercy. In any way we've been wicked, what we ought to have done and we did not do it. In any way that we've been slothful, in any way we've been unprofitable. Father, we ask you for mercy. Lord, I ask for your mercy, Father. Lord, have mercy. In the name of Jesus, Lord, have mercy. Lord, my God, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Have mercy on me, O Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. that I have buried my talent, O Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Now, I want us to take it into the again. Say, Father, in the ayota of wickedness in my life, consume it with fire. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, in the ayota, in the element of wickedness in my life, Father, by your fire, consume it in the name of Jesus Christ. Consume it in the name of Jesus Christ. Now we want to use the, the second word to pray with spirit of slothfulness, spirit of laziness. Say, Father, deliver me from every spirit of slothfulness in the name of Jesus Christ. Open your mouth and pray in the name of Jesus Christ. My Father, oh my God, have mercy. Deliver me from every spirit of slothfulness. Every spirit of slothfulness in my life. Oh Lord, deliver me in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Deliver me, my Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. From every spirit of slothfulness in the mighty name of Jesus Every spirit of love for this God. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Now, the last one, we want to be profitable servants unto the Lord. The rewards of the two servants, the one with five and the one with two. Say, so Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful with little. More shall be restored unto you. Enter thou into the job. Of the Lord. <laughs> that is the statement we all desire to hear on that faithful day, my brothers. That's the statement we want to hear. We don't want to hear that wicked and unprofitable sentence. May it not be our portion. Mm -hmm. This is what we want to hear. And for us to hear this, we need to be profitable. So we want to pray. First of all, let us pray it like this, first of all. For the only talents that you have bestowed in me that I do not know, reveal it unto me and give me the grace to check with it. Open your mouth and pray in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. My father, my father, the talents that you have bestowed unto me that I do not know, reveal it unto me, reveal it unto me and give me the grace to begin to trade with those talents in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, give me the grace, give me the grace, give me the grace to trade with those talents in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Before we pray the last one again, I, I, this thought just came to me with the Proverbs 31 woman. When you read the talk, the, the, the works that she was doing, she, this woman, she was, she was a merchandise. It's like she was a machine, a sheep. She said she considers a piece of land and she buys it. <laughs> then married a woman like single. Mm -hmm. She considered that piece of land and she bought it with the money she's been trading with. And it didn't say that she bought it without the consent of the husband. No, it didn't say so. But the money she's been trading with, she used it to buy a piece of land. Definitely, since she was a virtuous and honorable woman, she must have told the husband, Daddy, this money I have, let's buy a piece of land. And even if you are single, you don't keep your life on hold for the, until you meet the man. What if the man does not come to Jesus? Come. I told my 
and said, I'm going to live my life like I'm going to be single the rest of my life. Because if I happen to get into OH in retirement and there is no husband, where will I go? So I started speaking to myself, if the man can thank God for it, it's a plus. But it will not be a minus if he doesn't train me. Profitable servant. She considered a piece of land and she bought it. You want to pray that prayer? Father, make me a profitable servant. Physically, spiritually, with the talents, with the abilities, make me to be profitable. Open your mouth and begin to pray that prayer in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. My Father and God, make me a profitable servant in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The abilities, the potentials, make me not to be profitable in every aspect of my life. Let me be profitable in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Make me a profitable servant in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Amen. I want to pray. That's Father, my desire, the grace to hear this word, well done, good and faithful servant. May that be my portion. Open your mouth and pray that prayer. That it shall be our portion. That on that day we will hear. Well done, that good and faithful servant. Open your mouth and pray that that, that shall be your confession. That that shall be the words you will hear. When all is said and done, when you must have built up straight just for yourself in hell, you will hear that word that well done, good and faithful servant. And that that way to the joy of the Lord. And we all share that word in that last day. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. We have Amen. 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 I cover this word with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. And I pray that this word will fall on fertile ground and will produce fruits. Oh. I pray for the years that have heard that they will hear and heck, and they will not be hearers only, but doers in Jesus' precious and wonderful name. I pray. Amen. Over unto you, moderators. Amen.